All right, week 17, integration by parts BC. Here we go. We got two more weeks to go, so let's, let's get these taken care of. And again, this one here is a little bit nasty. It requires some practice. Um, as we do this problem, I'm going to first of all explain what we're doing. What we're doing is 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 odd, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, what if I wanted to take, and this is just for the fun of it, we don't know why we want to do this, but we're just going to say, what if I want to take the derivative of u times x, right? Well, u times x is two things multiplied together, so we know we use product rule, right? So that would be u, uh, oh, that should be a v, sorry, v here, two things multiplied together, two functions. Okay, uh, so that would be u dv dt, dv dx, man, plus v du dx, right? Use the product rule. I take a, take the first part, I leave alone, and then I take the derivative of the second part with respect to x, and then plus v. So these are two different functions, u and v. One could be like a sine x, one could be e to the x. And then I'm take so I do the pro, by doing the uh, product rule, I end up with the first one times the of the second one plus the second one times the of the first one. Not really shocking. Now what's interesting about this is what if I integrate both sides with respect to x? What happens? Well, the left side's pretty trivial, right? It's the second fundamental theorem. I'm going to end up with just u times v. Those two functions multiplied together. On the right-hand side, though, I end up with the integral of u dv dx dx. So I'm taking the derivative and the integral with respect to the same thing. Plus integral of v, and then I end up with du dx dx, right? Well, these two things cancel out because you're asking to take the derivative of u respect to u and derivative of x, as long as you employ the chain. So because of that, you end up with the following expression, which doesn't seem terribly useful, but it says if you have a function u and a function v, and you want to find the, you can express that as the integral of the first thing, taking the derivative with respect to the second thing, plus the second thing, taking the integral with respect to the first thing. All right. Now, as a reminder, we've been using u for a while now, right? We've been using u equals something ugly, right? And then we took the derivative, uh, pausing. We know the world's in a good place because that was just a telemarketer who didn't want to talk to me. All right, so uh, where we're at, we said u equals ugly. So du equals the derivative of ugly, right? Whatever the function is with respect to x times dx, right? That's what we've been doing all along, right? So that's essentially what we're doing here is we're saying this expression right here is the same thing we've been doing for months now, or for some of you for a year now. So it leaves us with this little remnant on here on the left side. If I can find my pen, I can't find my pen, so right over here. There you go. Um, so this little remnant right here, okay? Now I'm going to clean this up and put it in a way that's going to be helpful to us when we go to take integrals. And that specifically is if I move the integral u dv to one side, let's make sure this is the way I wrote it in your notebook guide. That's the way I did. It's going to be equal to uv minus the integral of v du. This is algebra 2, right? You're just moving things around, minus signs, plus sign. And this is it right here, and it's a beautiful thing, right? This is actually what it is we came here to do. Because it allows us to take the integral of something, okay, and the integral of something that we might not be able to take otherwise. Now, the reason why we're doing this is we have two things multiplied together. So when this is going to be effective is when we have two things multiplied together. So here we're going to go within our example uh, right now. So now I'm going to start with the example that's in our packet. The example that's in our packet is the integral of x e to the x dx. Now, first step, and the steps are on the previous page. So I'm on page two, but the steps are on the previous page. Can I do this thing normally? Well, I've set u equal to e to the x, the derivative is e to the x, so x isn't going to be what I get. If I take the take u equal to x, it's always a waste of time, so that won't work, okay? Second step, are the two differential functions multiplied together? In other words, can I take the derivative of these two things normally? Yeah, I could certainly take derivative x and derivative e to the x separately. The problem is I have two things multiplied together, okay? Next step, typically what we're going to do is we're going to set the harder part, the weirder part, the part that's a bit more messy. We're going to set it equal to dv. We're going to assume it is the dv we were talking about before, right? So we're going to say dv, dv is equal to, in this case, e to the x, sorry, 
flipped on it. e to the x dx, right? We're going to set it equal to that. We're going to say, look, I'm guessing this is true. Now, if we're wrong, all that happens is we have to go back to the starting point and try it again. Well, is that x dx would be the logical other choice. We set one of the functions and attach a dx to it. We say dv would have to be this for this to work, but we're trying out, okay? Then we're going to say, therefore, v would be equal to, well, that'd be integrating this, right? If the derivative is this, then the integral of this is just e to the x, agreed? Okay. Now, we haven't figured out what u is, right? So we're going to say u is the other thing that's left over. So u equals x, okay? That's the other function. So here's one function, right? Here's one function. There's the other function. We thought e to the x was uglier, so say dv equals e to the x dx. We took the integral, and we got x, so v equals e to the x. So therefore, we set u equal to x, and we're going to set, therefore, du has to be equal to 1 dx. Again, using the same rule we've been using all along. Okay? Using the same rule as we used all along. This is the same same game, right? We take derivative of x and we tack on a dx when we're done. So now we recognize the format of an a integration by parts is the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du, right? So now I'm just going to plug things in where they go. So the integral of u, which is x, dv, which is right here, right? e to the x, dx. So that's what I started with, right? That's what I started with over here, right? Is equal to uv. u is x. v is e to the x minus the integral of v which is e to the x, which is written right here, right? That's that right here. Uh, du, which in this case would be 1 dx, or just plain old dx. Can I do this? Answer, yes, I can. This is just going to be x e to the x minus e to the x, right? So the integral that we started with, which we couldn't do, is equal to this right here plus c, right? We've got our plus c. We put our plus C in there. And that's how we do integration by parts. Now, so the trick of this thing is going to be figure out all these steps as you go along. You're going to end up doing all the pieces. So from the beginning, we have this expression right here. Let me choose a different color so I can make weird colors around it. Okay. So this thing right here is what we're trying to make. So we look at the original expression, which was this one over here, right? And we say, well, one of these has got to be U, and the other one's going to be, when the DX is attached to it, my DV. I typically guess the ugliest thing goes first, right? So I look at the e to the x dx and I go, all right, fine. I'm going to make that my uglier thing because I think x is actually easier, right? I take, once I have that, I write the expression for it. And then I go on next up step. I just, I have, if the dv is equal to this, then if I integrate both sides, then v has to be equal to e to the x. Using, going back to my original expression right here, right? I need u. We'll use what's left over. u is x, so I plug the x right in here. And I need a du, so I take the derivative like I normally would and get 1 dx. All right, I hope this is all making sense. It's hard without looking at people's faces. All right, so that's how you do a, a single problem. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and save this video, and I'm going to go ahead and give you a second problem in just a second.